are we doing FYE guys hope things are good with you I'm hoping that everybody's safe and uh, and well and doing well um, I, I thank you for last week's assignments if you didn't send one in next uh, last week please get it to me as soon as you possibly can we're kind of getting a crunch time uh, this video is for FYE week 12 um, it's gonna be a 14 week semester so we're really starting to uh, get down to the wire here a couple things I want to talk to you about um, the end of uh, drop ad, I believe, is this week. So at the end, by the end of this week, if there's a class um, that you would like to drop, you're going to need to go online and go ahead and do that. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, uh, email me. I'll send you a link to the, the, the paperwork. It used to be a situation where you'd go and get a form and, and, and carry it around to your advisor and have to take it to different offices, but I think they're all going to do it. Uh, it's all done online now. So uh, if you need that form, you need a link to that form, let me know. But they have extended the drop ad period. Usually, it's a little earlier than this. But, but at this point, if you've got a uh, course that's uh, that's crashing on you, and you've got room in your schedule somewhere to take it later on, um, I would highly advise you to consider doing that. So, uh, keep that in mind. Again, um, if you drop a class, it doesn't mean the class is no longer a requirement for you. It's still a requirement. The only concern I have is if you drop a class that's a sequential, it's a prerequisite for something else, and you drop the class you may not be able to get into that second class, uh, that next class in sequence. And if you've already scheduled for next semester, they may kick you out of a class that, uh, that required the class you dropped. So be aware of that. Make sure you're uh, talking with your advisor about dropping. Um, I would actually suggest if, you, if you're considering dropping a class, email your advisor first. Um, and you know how to find your advisor. You go out to Degree Works, and the name of the advisor will be on Degree Works. And then you go to the faculty directory on the website, and you'll find out that uh, that faculty member's email address. And you email them, and uh, you know talk to them about that uh, potential drop. So that's if that's something you want to do, kind of keep that in mind. Um, but you're going to have to do that quick. Um, so be aware of that. Again, we're going to week 12, 14 week semester. Uh, being able to drop this late is pretty unusual, but make sure you've got a uh, you've got the ability to go ahead and drop out if you if you need to um, drop a class. Another thing too is you got to be careful too because if you drop below 12 credit hours, um, you could potentially lose your financial aid. You're definitely going to lose full time status. Uh, below 12 credit hours, so I don't recommend dropping below 12 because then it could it could hurt you with your financial aid. You may end up owing the school more money, um, believe it or not, and you may actually run into a situation where it'll kind of hose you as far as uh, credits for graduation. So uh, try to stay in that full time status uh, as much as you possibly can. There is an opportunity this semester too with your classes. Um, to do what they call a pass-fail. Uh, if you're in a situation where you feel that you're, uh, um, you know, struggling with a class or and, and you don't want to, to, to affect your GPA, uh, maybe you transition to the online world and it's not working out for you, um, you could elect to take that class as a pass-fail. Um, the only issue with that is you're going to need to receive at least a C grade in that class to get the pass. Um, a C is a 2.0, so if you've got a GPA that's above of like a 3 or a 3.5 and you've got a class that you feel is going to draw it down, um, it may not be a bad option for you to just take a pass-fail on that. If you do get a C or a C plus, it's not going to pull your GPA down. So if you're looking at scholarships or internships and it requires you to have a, uh, a relatively healthy GPA, it's not a bad option to consider a pass-fail. I believe you can pass-fail up to 8 credit hours a semester. So if you have 8 credit hours uh, of classes that you can elect to do a pass-fail instead of actually receiving a grade for it. Um, the pass, if you do get a pass, it won't affect your, uh, your uh, uh, GPA. It won't raise it or lower it. Um, if you get a fail, basically the same thing. You don't get credit for the class, but that grade in that class is not going to bring down your GPA. So, so be aware of that. Make sure you read through all that material and understand it, but uh, you should have gotten an email on that. And again, if you missed that email, let me know. I'll see if I can find it, and I'll push it over to you. But uh, those are two things that are really, really important. Another thing that's real important to us, uh, and it is to you too, is to make sure you're registered for classes this fall. Uh, because uh, we expect there's going to be a reduction in the number of freshmen coming in this fall, and potentially some of the returning students, um, we may actually run into a situation where they start eliminating sections. And if there's a class that in particular that you need, you have to get into that class and you have to reserve a seat for it. Because if they do eliminate that class, 
you're going to be you know you're going to be in trouble because uh, you didn't get into it. So make sure you get scheduled for the courses that you need, uh, and make sure that those things are uh, those are taken care of. So uh, so make sure you get registered for courses if you haven't yet. Let's get them done. I'm just going to kill my speaker here so you're not hearing that beep. Uh, that's those are my emails coming in, but. But for you guys, you know, if, I, if you still need help with registering for classes or you still need help with financial aid or if you need help with really of anything, let me know. Um, again, your first point of contact would be your advisor. But if there's something I can answer quick, please put it in your journal or, or send me a separate email and that'd be great. Uh, most of you guys are keeping up with your journals. Uh, a couple of you kind of drifted off, but you know I'm 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 going to be pretty flexible for the for the last part of the semester. But I got to get an email at least once a week from you checking in. Um, this particular week, I'm going to. Uh, and, and again, this is a little bit different for me. Uh, teaching this class um, online is teaching it live because there's, there's tremendous amounts of discussion in this area. But I'm going to try to find a video that's decent for you to watch. Uh, that will make up for coming to sign of the, uh, some of the side discussions that we have in class. But I also want you to dialogue a little bit more in your journals w as far as the major topic of the week. Major topic of the week this week is goal setting. Um, and again, you guys have probably gotten the speech in a million different classes by a million different professors and a million different maybe high school teachers throughout your, your career. Um, but goal setting, I feel, is very, very important. Um, having, having things that you want to achieve in your life uh, and having a direction and working toward those those uh, those goals are very very important. Um, what I find in my own personal life and what I found throughout my career is a lot of times we'll have a goal or something we want to achieve, but because we don't have a timetable set up, we don't say that okay I want to achieve this in five years, I want to achieve this in two years, I want to achieve this in six months. Um, we always push that to the back burner. That's always something we can do tomorrow, we can do later, we can do later. And before you know it, you're putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And before you know it. That old procrastination thing kicks in and you never really started to work towards those goals. Um, so at this point in your life, you're in a college, you're investing money in an education, you're working towards a degree, you're working towards a career path. You really need to have some set, you know, set goals, things that you want to achieve. Now, they're not always career-minded. Um, it could be something that's a personal goal. Maybe you want to lose some weight or maybe you want to you know, uh, be more athletic or maybe more healthy or if you want to get into a situation where you maybe get away from some negative things that's going on in your life. Um, if that's your goal, that's fine. But the idea is you need to put those down. You need to write those down. You need to put those in a journal. You need to put those in your phone. You need to put those on a, on a, on a template. And the idea is... As long as they're there, as long as you've identified the goals that you want to achieve, it could be a financial goal. You may say, okay, I want to make my first you know, $100,000 by the time I'm 20. That, that's cool. But the idea is you establish a goal and then you work your life around those goals. You put yourself in positions that will make you um, achieve those goals. Now, this is where the, where the interesting thing comes in. As you progress in life, a lot of times your goals change. Uh, your life's going to change. Things that are in opportunities are going to change. So those goals may be flexible. So you may have a goal today and in a year from now that's not even something you want to consider. But that doesn't matter as long as you're working towards an objective. Um, the worst thing that can happen to you is you actually find yourself in a situation where you, know, you look back after 10 or 15 or 20 years and say, these are all the things that I really wanted to achieve and I haven't really done anything to get towards them. Um, so it's really kind of a good idea to put those out in front of you um, what I like to do is just write them down. I write my personal goals down. Um, I look at them, you know, periodically. A lot of times I'll put them in my planner. I'll put them on my, my to-do sheet. And uh, as I go through life, I look back at that and say, okay, this is what I want to achieve. I want to save a certain amount of money. I want to be a little bit more secure. I want to have a little bit better, you know, better health, that kind of thing. So those are things that are, that if you put them out there, they're relatively easy to achieve because, again, you're taking those in small steps at a time. Uh, right now, you guys should be building resumes. Last week, we talked about career objectives and things that you want to do in your life. Um, and again, what's a resume? A resume are things that you've achieved. Um, if you find your resume today matches the same resume you have in 15 years, that means you haven't had any experiences. You haven't actually done any personal growth or professional growth along the way. Um, some of you, your goal may be to travel and see the world, and that's fine. But you got to put yourself in a financial position or put yourself in a position to be able to personally go out and do that. Um, the goals are, 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 are anything. It doesn't have to be professional. It doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to be health. It can be anything that you want to achieve. 
but what it is is a target, something for you to work towards. Um, athletes do it all the time. They want to run faster. They want to run better. Um, basketball players want to score more you know, baskets, that kind of thing. The way they achieve that is through practice, and the practice is conditioning themselves for those particular goals that they're looking for. But if they don't practice, um, they, they, they're never going to achieve those things. So the idea is to put yourself in a position where this is my goal, this is what I want to achieve. And it may be a one-year goal, maybe a two-year goal, five-year, it could be a ten-year goal. It could be just a life goal. But the idea is you, you put that in and that's something you focus on. And if you ever find yourself in your life in a position where you don't have anything to do or you're, you're finding yourself, believe it or not, you're bored, you're, you're in a situation where you feel you need to, need to go do something, grab that goal list, take a look at it, see what you can do. Um, some of the biggest successes I've had personally and professionally have been just, you know, going back and looking at those goals. Anytime I get depressed with my job, I'm cracking open the help wanted ads, find out what's available out there. If I find a job that interests me, I find out what's required for me to get that job, and then I work towards those requirements. Um, and that's that's opened a lot of doors for me. In some cases, the the process of the path that you take to achieve the goals is sometimes more rewarding than the actual achieving the goal. So kind of keep that in mind. So my assignment for you guys, I'm going to get a video out there to you. Uh, I'm sure there's some stuff out on YouTube. There's probably a thousand videos out there on YouTube that'll that'll uh, probably do better than I just did talking about goal setting and priority setting and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to find some of that for you. But what I'm looking for from you from this week is I want you to give me three goals. Okay, One goal is going to be professional. What do you want to achieve professionally in the next five years? Where do you see yourself degree-wise, professionally wise, working wise, where are you going to be within your, your, your particular chosen industry in five years? Okay. Um, and again, put it out there, put it out there, make, make it